Hello and welcome back to this fifth lesson dealing with blocks and array in AutoCAD 2012. As you can see, I prepared a little drawing for demonstration purposes, but you should be able to follow along by making your own drawing or a small doodle maybe looking like this. For the first demonstration, I'll focus on how to create a simple block. So you either draw a bed like this or a doodle like this one and you select the line works you would like to include in the block and you go to the insert ribbon and go to the manage attributes and create a block or you type in B for block and hit enter. In this block definition dialog you will give the doodle a name instant doodle and pick an insert point which could be the end point of this line for instance and you tell it to convert the six objects or lines that you've selected into a block and you hit OK and now you notice that the line works has been blocked or grouped and you are able to insert instances of this doodle and you're able to control C, copy, and control V, paste them wherever you want in the project. In case you would like to modify it, you go to the block editor or you double click on the block and select the one you want to edit and press OK. And this will take you to the block editor mode where you could, for instance, delete align or move it. We'll save this block, save the changes and we'll close the block editor and you notice that it changes all the instances we copied that we have inserted. This type of block is only saved within the project called lesson 5. But in case we would like to reuse it in other projects, I'll show you the method of how to do that. I'll select the line works that I would like to include in this block and I'll hit W, enter for writing a block. And once again, I'll define the base point, which could be the insertion point here for the internal wall. I'll Define the folder I would like to save it in. It could be a folder called vblock library and I will name it, call it 9m door internal for instance and I'll save it and I'll once again ask it to convert the lines, the 16 objects or lines into a block and I'll hit OK. Once again, you'll notice that all of the line works combined into one block or group that we are allowed to move or copy around for instance like this or that we are like allowed to edit as well. Having saved the door externally means that we can load it into other projects um, and don't have to draw the door once again. The last type of blocks we are looking at is similar to the V block, but in this case it will contain attributes. As an example, it could be a drawing head or a title box like this one, which when double clicking on it, prompt us and ask us to fill in values for the tag called project. We can call it test one and test two and hit OK. And you notice that text are being filled in to the title head. 
I'll jump back to my model space and try to create a very simple title box with an attribute. I created a couple of lines or rectangles here, a little bit of text. And I'll now go to the manage attributes. Sorry, I'll define an attribute and I will call it test. And um, the prompt should be test as well. And the text height, I think it was 150 I used for this demonstration. And I will specify the insertion point on the screen. So I'll say OK to this and I will place it somewhere here. So far nothing happened. Um, I noticed that if I double click on this one, I'm able to fill in um, the attribute default value. Um, but I would like to include this attribute in my title box. So I select my lines, my text and the attribute and I create a block, either a block or a V block. In this case, I'll just make a simple block and I'll call it title box. And I could pick an insertion point here um, and press OK. And instantly it allows me to fill in the text in the attribute and I'll call it lesson five. OK. Before ending, I'll show you the array function, which is often being used in combination with blocks. I have here line works that I'll quickly make into a block. I have a insertion point here and call it square. And I would now like to array this square by going to the home ribbon and make a rectangular array. That's the only one I'll demonstrate, but I'll of course I hope that you'll also test out the path array and the polar array. As you can see, when I'm moving the cursor around, a number of arrays are being created. Uh, I can either type in uh, the distances, but in this case, I would like to use the option giving down here and type in the amount of arrays by pressing count or C for count, hit enter and ask it to make two rows, hit enter again and um, four columns, hit enter again and then I'll define the spacing of it and I would maybe like it to be let's say 600 between the rows and 600 between the columns as well. And I'll exit or finish this command by pressing escape. And now I have an array and of course I'll be able to multiply it or edit it either by using the arrows or using the options up here. Okay, I'll end for now and I hope to see you in lesson six.